So anyway, we're going to talk about specific heat, okay? You have four variables to look at, four specific variables. Uh, the first one is Q. Now Q is something that we were introduced to a long time ago, you probably don't remember, but Q is specifically energy. And we're going to measure energy in joules, okay? Now we talked about joules when we talked about Planck's constant. Uh, joules times seconds, that was the units for it a long time ago when we were doing like wavelength and frequency and all that jazz. So you have heard of it, we just haven't referred to it since then, but now we are. So Q is our energy, M is our mass, and that will usually be measured in grams or kilograms. Uh, it depends. Today it'll be a lot of kilograms, but it's also in grams a lot. Uh, delta T is our temperature change. I mean, I'm just making sure we know this. That one's pretty straightforward. And then the last thing, C, whatever our C is, will be our specific heat. Now, temperature change will almost always be degrees Celsius, even though it can be degrees Fahrenheit. And specific heat will always be these units, depending on what our mass is. It'll be uh, joules per gram times degrees Celsius. So there's like a, a ratio there that we're going to deal with. So don't let that confuse you. Now, what we're going to do with this problem is just go through, identify every variable, and then solve it. So why don't we do this? Now, you got how much energy in joules is released when 650.6 grams of iron metal is cooled from 456 degrees Celsius to 22 degrees Celsius, uh, and then it gives us our specific heat. So this is about as straightforward as it gets. You just have to go through, and what I do, I identify every variable immediately. So Q, do we know Q? Are we given Q? What do you see? No. No? They want us to figure out Q. We know that because it says how much energy in joules is released. So right there, that's us figuring out Q. Then it says, when 650.6 grams of iron. So you're like, boom, we got our mass. There's our mass. You know that because it says that. Then it says it's cooled from 456 to 22 degrees Celsius. So our delta T. It's going to be 456 minus 22. What's that give us? Seriously, what does it give us? Correct. So that's our delta T. It's the change. Now, what? Oh. Now, uh, you look here, the specific heat. You have one more variable, and you have to look and say, well, it tells us it's 0 0.444 joules per gram times degree Celsius. The units matter, by the way. You've got to write it all in. So that is our specific heat, or at least our formula to solve using specific heat. But we want Q, so all you do is just literally plug everything in. Q is equal to 650.6 grams. Uh, delta T is 434 degrees Celsius. Now again, the order, remember that the order that you write these in is completely up to you. Since you're multiplying, the order does not matter. So you do that, you multiply everything together. Here's the thing, you look at your units. Grams are on the bottom here, they're on top here. They cancel. Degrees Celsius and degrees Celsius. Those cancel. And you're left with joules by itself. So at this point, I'm assuming you can more than likely do the math to figure this out. You're just going to take 650 times 434. Oh, probably we'll do 650.6 times 434 times point. and we get that. That's a big number, isn't it? That's what you get though, that's the answer. So the answer is Q is equal to 100. Do we have to write it like scientific? Uh, depends. So, that's the first way that you would write this. Um, you're gonna get some big numbers, by the way, just so you know, like if you get numbers in like the millions and stuff, totally fine. Or you get some small numbers too, like, it's okay. 
it takes a lot of energy to heat stuff up. Like to heat water up, uh, any significant amount of water takes an incredible amount of energy, or at least what's going to seem like a lot of energy to you. Can we simplify it? Yeah, what if we get like a really big number? Yeah, so, so the, here's how I would write. This is, the way I would write this is probably 1.25 times 10 to the fifth uh, joules. That's how I would do it. I don't care for you, though. And then the other way, the way that you would most... So you look at this one. Um, you go through, identify all the variables. Again, it's pretty straightforward. You got 0.5 kilograms, so that's mass. Uh, okay, we've identified that it's aluminum, so make a note of that because you're going to have to look up the specific heat of aluminum. Uh, and then it's temperature. It says that the aluminum increases its temperature 7 degrees Celsius when heat energy is added. Now, don't let this confuse you because all that's going to happen here is that we don't have a change in temperature shown. We don't have like 10 degrees and then like 17 degrees or something. It just says the temperature went up 7 degrees. That is the change in temperature right there. There's no subtraction. Just It's, it's the same thing as saying you went from 10 degrees to 17. Seven. So delta T is equal to 7 degrees Celsius. It confused the daylights out of second hour, so I figured I would explain it just to make sure. Uh, and then it says when heat energy is added, how much heat energy is produced? So they want Q. Uh, so the only thing you have to do now that you don't know, we've got to find C of aluminum. So, yeah, if you are resourceful and you realize there is a back to this worksheet, and there is a big chart on the bottom of it, you can see the specific heat of aluminum is 900 joules per kilogram degree Celsius. So, you write down that that is 900 joules per kilogram times degree Celsius. Now, notice it's kilograms, so just be aware of that when you're writing it out. That's why the mass is also in kilograms. So then you're just going to go through and do exactly the same thing we just did. You're going to plug all your stuff in, and you're going to solve it. So our formula is Q is equal to M. So then you're just going to take your stuff and plug it in. Use your units again. That's equal to Q. So what do you actually get for this one? I don't remember. Yeah, that's it. 3,150. And then what are our units? Joules. Joules. Because grams, kilograms cancels, degrees Celsius cancel, and you're left with just joules. So that's pretty straightforward there. Wait, yes, what? Um, in the example, you did joules over grams to the Celsius, and then this one you did kilograms. Like, yes. Do you have to do any conversions to get it to kilograms? For, for this stuff, Right, today, no, you don't have to do conversions, but that's a very good observation because, like, you have kilograms here. You're, like, you see how both the units are in kilograms? Yeah. But, like, if one of these was grams and your specific heat value was kilograms, then, yeah, you would have to account for that. You'd have to convert one to the other. All right, yeah. Like, just I so you know. I get how you, like, just changed it and it didn't matter. Well, it doesn't matter because both, like, our, our mass was given to us in kilograms. And the, the value that we looked up was given to us in kilograms as well. So like, but if this was the value in, uh, if it was like grams, it would be 0.9 joules per gram times degree Celsius. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. that'd be the difference. Yeah. Um, how come we uh, kilograms and other grams? That's exactly what I just told <laughs> Like, just because the chart that you have on the back of this worksheet is in kilograms. But there's also values for specific heat in grams. That's all. Just, just it's just a little thing. Just you know, pay attention to it. But again, you're going to be given the values in kilograms. So, any other questions on this one? Okay. What I would like you to do then is very quickly go through and try to do the rest of this. We're going to go over five. I'm going to do number five for you in about five minutes or ten minutes. So try to get through the rest of this. You know, get through at least five in the next ten minutes, all right? So for number five, <coughs> you want to look here. Uh, this one is just a little different because you're not solving for Q. You're solving for a specific heat, so it's a little different. Um, 
So you go through and you see that Q in this case, they actually tell you is 1500 joules. It says that your mass is equal to 0 0.12 kilograms. It says the temperature decreases from 45 to 40 degrees. So your delta T is equal to 5 degrees Celsius. And then, it's, then it says what is the specific heat of this object. So it doesn't even tell you what it is to look it up. So you just have to say, you know, what is our specific heat? So in this case, we've got three variables, and we've got or three known things and one variable to solve for. So our equation, remember, is Q is equal to M delta T C. So what we're going to do, we're going to plug everything in. Now please make sure you're labeling your units as usual because, well, you just have to. So, feel free to replace like C with X or something if it makes you feel more comfortable like doing the math part of all this. So what you're going to do now, you're going to divide or just basically isolate C by itself. That's your goal. So what I do here, whatever you, know, whatever you do to one side of an equation, you have to do to the other side of the equation. So you take and I'm going to divide you know, by 0 0.12 kilograms and I'm going to divide what is that? Anyway. You are. So what we're going to do here when we divide this, we do it to the other side too. So it'll be 0 0.12 kilograms and then 5 degrees Celsius. Now, since this is directly above it, it cancels out. That cancels out. So you're left with 1,500 joules divided by So, there you go. That'll be equal to C by itself. The only thing to make sure that you remember, I guess, when you do the math, please multiply these together first before you do the division. So you get the right answer. Remember how order of operations works? Um, other than that, I mean, that's all you got to do. And I think, what do you end up getting? Yeah, I know it's wood, but what's the, what's the number? 2,500. 2,500. So... Your C is equal to 2,500. Now look at your units. It's joules over kilograms times degrees Celsius. Notice that's exactly what we want. It works out like that on purpose. Yeah. Why do you do it the hard way? Can you just multiply 0.12 and then 5 degrees Celsius and then divide it by 1,500? Yeah. Why are you doing all that? I just, just show you every step. I, I wanted you to see. I like to do that because of the units, honestly, because oh. I keep them separate. Just, that's all. But feel free yeah, to do it that way. If I was just doing it myself, that's all I would solve. Yeah. So feel free. Um, that's it. The other thing, uh, if you look, for right now, keep all, the, all the, the delta T's positive, like no negatives today. Just keep everything positive. And in that vein, I want you to look at the back, the very first problem on the back. You see where it says you're going from negative 45 to 15? Think about that. What's the temperature change there? Negative 30. What is it? Negative 60. No negative. Just keep everything positive. It's just 65. All right, the temperature change that we're going from, and I'm saying this for a reason, is it's going to be 60. Because think about it. You have to think with the temperature scale, you're not just doing subtraction. You're going from, you're going from negative 45 to 0, then to 15. So it's 45 to 0 plus 15, so total of 60. Just so you know when you get to that one, okay?